How much do our beliefs affect our lives? Some research findings show that patients who suffer from depression and are strongly tied to religious practices struggle from severe suicide ideation. While other research reveals that the more religious a society is, the less likely its members are to commit suicide. Despite these contrasting data, one thing we can conclude is that beliefs have a huge impact on the life of every one of us. Let's take a deep look at this perspective here. In many ways, faith has been a crime on this planet. The worst kind of crime has happened in the name of faith. Yes? If you just believe something hard and fast, because either you're born into that culture, or somebody has really worked upon you, or some other compulsion has made you take to it. The moment you believe this is it, then there's no need for your mind. Mind is a tool for exploration, not for drawing conclusions. Unfortunately, most people are using their mind to draw conclusions. This mind is not about drawing conclusions, this is a tool for exploration. That you can continue to look at life in deeper and deeper ways, in more profound ways of experience and knowing. That's the significance of the mind. Now, the disease of doubt and suspicion, you try to fix it with faith, no. You just have to refine your logic, you have to refine the nature of your mind that you need to understand that there is a way to be in this world without taking any position. That's why the postures, yoga postures, you understand? <laughs> to twist yourself this way, that way because to understand that I don't want to take any particular position in my life. I'm not stuck this way or that way. I'm born to know life from every possible direction. Every possibility that this life is, I wish to know when I'm alive. So if that has to happen, you need a flexible mind, a mind that has not taken positions, a mind does not, does not believe or disbelieve something. Belief and disbelief are not two different things. They are positive belief or negative belief, that's all they are. Two different ways of believing, belief, belief and disbelief. So we are not talking about faith versus atheism, belief versus disbelief, no. We are talking about why can't you learn to not take a position of anything. Right now to conduct a particular activity we take positions but there is no need to take positions to live, to be alive here. If you want to know life, you should not take any position or any opinion about anything. The moment you form an opinion, that means you are not open to anything else, isn't it? Whether it's about a person or yourself or about the life around you, you don't form any kind of opinion or conclusion. Conclusion means death. Instead of sharpening your vision, you're drawing a conclusion because conclusion brings a certain certainty. It brings a certain confidence. Confidence without clarity is a disaster. An ignorance which is aware and acknowledged by yourself that I'm ignorant is a far more powerful and profound state than a knowledge that you have concluded about. You have conclusions about everything and everybody. Just try this one simple sadhana in your life, all of you. Whatever conclusions you have about yourself, about the people around you, about the situations around you, just give it up tonight. Tomorrow morning just wake up and look at everything fresh. Just do this every day, at least see if you can maintain this for the first one hour after you're awake you will see it will take lots of work, you understand? If you're looking at everything fresh, you will not miss a single possibility. Everything is alive to you. Where people see nothing, you will see all kinds of things. Where people see 
problems, you will see possibilities in life. But the moment you conclude, if you make conclusions and you concretize it and then you get it endorsed by heaven, then you're calling that faith. Ignorance endorsed by a great authority will not become truth. This is the biggest problem that people think authority is truth. No, truth is the only authority in the creation, in this existence. You really don't know anything about the nature of this existence, isn't it? You don't know when this entire solar system is going to fall apart. Maybe it's tomorrow morning, do you know? Do you know whether it is going to fall apart tomorrow morning or not, do you know? You don't know when you will fall dead, you don't know when it's going to happen, but it's all right. But if you are that kind of a mind which is looking for faith, you know everything, not just here. Beyond death, where you will go, what kind of accommodations you will get there, you know the works. This kind of knowing is what needs to go. Adapting to change is one of life's major challenges. The fear of uncertainty could be stressful. However, research shows that adaptability combined with social support is the key to living a more satisfied life. Adaptability requires striving to manage our thinking. Social support means seeking help and using our adaptability to achieve life satisfaction. Will all the efforts exerted in this direction really be significant in our life? What life throws at you is not always your choice. What you make out of it is entirely your choice. It is this choice that we need to exercise right now. So right now, all that's happened to a whole lot of people was, when they were going to work, they were freaking and fretting every day and they always said it's because of the work, the demands of the work, how ugly the boss is, how bad the traffic is. We took away all those ugly things, now you're home sweet home. Now people are saying, we want to get out, we can't stay here anymore, don't sit and crib about everything, okay? You are not suffering your work, you are not suffering the break, you are suffering the nature of your own mind, it's time to fix it. If you are suffering it, everybody around you must be suffering it too. What's happening in your mind is just your drama. You just have to become a better director of things, that your drama should happen your way. The world's drama may not happen your way, it's bigger than you, but at least what's happening in your head must happen your way. So this is a time to take charge of that. If right now, if you can think of what you want, not compulsively about something else, you would naturally be blissful. If right now, you can keep your emotions very pleasant, oh, your home would be so pleasant. Inner engineering process by itself involves the body, the mind, emotion and energy. What we need to do with the body and energy, we will have to do direct because that's a kind of a transmission, that is not a teaching. But what we do with mind and emotion is a kind of a teaching that you can experience online. If you just cultivate your mind and your emotion, suddenly your life is transformed substantially. That's why in engineering online. Access powerful tools and engineer an ambience of joy peace and clarity in your life. One of your limitations, one of your problems, one of your nonsense that people suffer around you, one of those things should go. Because without transformation, empty spirituality, talking spirituality, acting spiritual is no good. Some transformation must happen, isn't it? Please make that happen so that uh, when you live, people will enjoy living with you. When you die, they'll miss you. That's how you should live. When you live, people should enjoy your presence. When you die, they should miss you. If the reverse happens, 
that means we've lived the wrong way, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> the mind is a powerful tool that every person possesses. While it can lead to the creation of new opportunities, it can also be a potential obstacle in maximizing one's strengths. The key to make it work for you is to keep it open to new possibilities, because life is a matter of exploration and never a conclusion. Learn more about the realities of life by clicking on the video displayed above. Let us know which ideas strike you the most by leaving us a comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more meaningful videos like this. Thanks for watching.